this episode, we take a look at the glory days of cruising. We're whisking ourselves back in the day when cruise ships had stature and purpose. There was glitz and glamour. Evenings filled with gaiety and good companionship. When cruising felt like a big event and you ate like royalty. The Sandringham and the Balmoral feature international cuisine in a leisure and festive mood. And the journey was an epic adventure in itself. Each morning at sea, you wake refreshed and breakfast at leisure. And where you even brought your own limousine on board with you. This is the golden age of cruising. Welcome back to the Red Sea Travel Guide. My name is Bill. And in this special one-off episode, we take the opportunity to have a smile and look at how cruising used to be. California, here we come. And there's some fabulous material to look at. If you have even more energy to expend, and sea air gives you plenty, you'll want to take a workout in the gymnasium, equipped for every type of exercise. At times you'll be surprised, you'll laugh, and most of all, a tiny little part of you may wish that you'd been there to be a part of it all. In fact, some of you watching right now may have been there, so take a look out for yourself. Right, let's smarten our cravat, put our shoulders back, let's imagine we're in 1958. Today, the Cunard passenger fleet are the world's largest ships. Beautiful Queen Mary is known and loved by perhaps more travelers than any other ship in history. The Queen Mary is matched in popularity and surpassed in size only by her sister ship, the mighty Queen Elizabeth, the largest ocean liner ever built. So let's join the eager throng and experience for ourselves a modern North Atlantic crossing. Our ship is the Queen Elizabeth, and what a ship she is with a graceful prow towering high above the cars and taxis far below. Travelers are often amazed at the speed and ease with which more than 2,000 passengers are embarked. Right, we're giddy with 1950s enthusiasm. Let's get ourselves embarked. No two first-class rooms are alike. Each is an individual masterpiece of the decorator's art truly a luxurious setting for a happy journey. And you're delighted to discover the many unexpected personal services which make your travel easy and comfortable. Even while you're asleep at night, the service which makes your voyage pleasant goes on. The shoes you leave outside your door are meticulously shined and back in place again before morning. But now we must go on deck. Our friends will want to see us off Hundreds of people crowd the visitor's gallery. Eager thousands on ship and shore search for their friends to wave farewell. With the last gangway down and the final moorings thrown off, the Queen Elizabeth is ready to sail. A signal from the bridge goes by telegraph to the distant engine room. The Queen stirs into life. Everybody seems to be on deck waving to friends have come to see them off. For sailing is a thrill. A majestic sight indeed. Okay, so we're safely on board. In this case, it's the Cunard Queen Elizabeth. Let's get ourselves familiarized with the ship. How would we find our way around? Now we'll have time to catch our breath and learn to find our way around in this floating city. Handy deck plans show exactly where you are and make it easy for you to find your way about. A Cunard passenger list is a veritable who's who of travel. You're sure to see names you know. Later, on the Queen's broad decks, caressed by sunshine and salty winds, promenading becomes an exhilarating experience. And for perfect, carefree relaxation, what can compare to basking in a comfortable deck chair? and making a record of those leisure hours to show the folks back home. Here too, on the wide tourist class deck, there's plenty of room to take it easy in the sunshine. Okay, so a quick side note on the various classes for Cunard ships back in the 1950s, because you just heard a couple of references to cabin class and tourist class. Let's explain how it worked. 
most premium, and therefore pricey, was needless to say first class, and the prime midship space on the higher decks. Cabin class was one notch down in price, and occupied the aft of the ship, and finally there was tourist class that was right at the forward, the most bumpy part of the ship. It was no longer called steerage in those days, but as a tourist, you had the cheapest seats. So whatever facilities were on board, there were two or three versions of them, depending on your class. God forbid that a tourist class passenger would go in the first class library. Okay, so now you know your place, back to the ship. The big cabin class sports deck is one of the finest on the ship. And the tourist class sports deck offers plenty of room for healthful recreation. The spacious decks provide for every kind of open air fun. And after a workout like this, what could be more fun than a saltwater plunge in one of the big swimming pools? This cabin class pool on the Queen Elizabeth is one of the most beautiful on any ship. All served by experienced attendants who here, as everywhere on the ship, are carefully trained for their particular service. Wowzers, you even had a lady to towel you down after your dip in the pool. Such decadence! Two shipboard motion picture theaters present selected feature films, often before they've had their premiere showing on land. This beautiful modern theater for first and cabin class passengers seats more than three people in luxurious comfort. Forward on the promenade deck is another favorite gathering place, the observation bar. Its expert bartenders can provide any refreshment you like. But all the gay gathering places on the Queen Elizabeth are not for grown-ups only. There are other spots strictly for youngsters and what fun they have. All the youngsters have the time of their lives at the children's party and brilliantly colored balloons to play with. Fortunately, there's a quiet retiring place in the smoking room for Dad, where he and his companions can relax and enjoy their favorite refreshments, liquid or otherwise. And wow, did Dan probably need that stiff whiskey after all the turmoil aboard. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up, as it lets us know you'd like to see more of this type of material. Right, we'll be going back to the 1950s in just a moment, where we'll see the restaurants and the entertainment on board, the feasts and the gastronomic delights that were served, and room service. And here in the 21st century, cruising the Caribbean is a very much everyday affair. All of the cruise lines are offering trips. But back in the 1950s, it was considered a little bit more pioneering. It wasn't just the big-name liner companies offering cruises. There were some cruise lines in the 50s that don't even exist anymore, one of which was Grace Lines. For a while back in the 1950s, Grace Lines was extremely popular with the American cruising public. So let's take a look at how it would have felt. There's a spirit and a special feeling to those first few minutes on a cruise ship. The band on deck sets the mood. The sea calls. A sense of the adventure that is to come. You leave behind the demands of 20th century life. The noisy traffic jam. The ringing telephone. And we look ahead to the days of idleness and pleasure. The modern voyager is surrounded by luxury, a feeling of well-being that can be found nowhere else. The pace of living slows perceptibly. You begin to feel like yourself again. Carefree days, tropic waters. The fun is interrupted only by our modern call to arms. A thousand specialties prepared to please the palate of the most discerning gourmet. The first evenings are spent in just getting acquainted with fellow passengers. The hours pass in easy conversation. The evenings glow in a magic panorama of soft lights and softer music. Time, a priceless commodity. And now you've learned to enjoy it again. Every moment is pure pleasure. Fourth port of call, Jamaica. What's wrong with The gay music of Jamaica gives way to the sound of a drum. Today, it is Haiti. Thirteen days of enchantment. 
tropic airs and Caribbean skies. A time to remember. A time of pleasure, moonlight and romance. Uh, moonlight and romance, a time to remember. Very shortly, we're going to be going back to the 1920s and 30s, which in some ways were even more glamorous. And that's coming up very shortly. But don't forget, the cruising in the olden days wasn't just for the well-heeled and rich. The cruise lines knew they also had to make money out of the everyday customer, slightly lower down the social scale, and there were cruises for those who weren't rich. And a look in the archives delivers a very quirky and offbeat promotional film, luring people to the delights of Australia. And as you'll see from this footage, they very definitely weren't aiming at the whale hill. In fact, you might say they were slightly dumbing things down. And the video starts by telling us that the Australian government were encouraging people to emigrate to their beautiful, glorious country. Each week in the city of Sydney, Australia, the government lottery office sells 700,000 tickets in lotteries carrying prizes of up to 100,000 pounds. But honestly, what is there here to really interest a man? So you find the money and the time and you get moving. You and thousands of other happy wanderers go sailing off. That first step onto the deck, you feel that this is how you were meant to live. Heat up, deliciously alert. And things get a bit slack on board, as always the physical features of the landscape to interest you. Okay, having done what you were told and checked out the physical features aboard, you'll be ready for some good old-fashioned fun. Handfuls of grease, lavishly applied, and your end is slippery and sudden. The aquatic sports give the girls a chance to be openly aggressive. And having beaten the living daylights out of each other, it was time to smarten up for dinner. You're in the holiday spirit most of the time aboard ship. What kind of food do you get on board? But all this should make it clear that you don't need to bring any picnic baskets. And what might the Australians be offered for their after-dinner entertainment? A night at the races, but it's frogs instead of horses. And the secret is to coax them along. Meanwhile, above decks, the teenagers rock themselves to sleep. Okay, so bearing in mind this video is a promotional movie made by and for the cruise lines to attract people onto their ships, slightly strange activities they were suggesting were going on board with the teenagers. Okay, so far we haven't looked at the grooving 60s, and trust me, there was some fun to be had on the sea. And ship designs and activities took on a different home. Everyone, it seems, tried to look like James Bond and sip a martini. She likes people. You sense she likes you. A little tug, and you're off on a sun soap. You're riding high on a ship that's graciously groomed. Fortnight's dream holiday afloat in a hotel that offers everyone its every ounce of enjoyment. Lazy days in the sun. Lazy ways of having fun. This is a perfect voyage. But it's only a few footsteps from one amenity to the next. And if you've eaten just too well, spend a few minutes in the gymnasium. If you're 16, there's space to be 16. There's room to move in the groove, to feel alive and jive to a beat your feet can't resist. Too much deck tennis? Then soothe those surprised muscles. This is the holiday of your dreams, and everything and everyone fits into your dream, and the dream never fades when you open your eyes. If it's too hot for you outside, step into the shade of the library. You just can't help enjoying yourself. Just choosing the food is the hardest decision required of you, wherever you go aboard this ship. You delight in dining, you delight in the decor, you delight in days that languidly leave the rush of life behind. The days sail by until, suddenly, you awake to find sunshine. You feel you should have been up to welcome this lovely day. So, peel a peach for breakfast, then join them in their fun. 
Always fantastic advice. Peeler Peach, love it. Now, whilst we were all grooving and twisting the night away in the 1960s, a new concept was rapidly gaining popularity, and that was taking a world cruise. Around the world. The dream of explorers ever since man first learned to sail the sea. The Caronia. This graceful liner inviting you to come aboard and see just a few of the highlights of the great world cruise. 33,000 miles of pleasure cruising. Our voyage of more than 100 days will take us to Trinidad and Brazil. Across the South Atlantic to Tristan da Cunha and Africa. Over the warm Indian Ocean to Zanzibar and the Seychelles. To India and Ceylon. We'll sail to Singapore. To Thailand and romantic Bali. We'll visit Manila and Hong Kong and Japan in cherry blossom time, Mexico and Panama. 23 ports in 17 countries. A smooth sailing luxury vacation resort headed for strange and faraway places. Largest ocean liner ever built especially for round the world cruising, the Caronia adds a new dimension both to traveling and to living. And what's the best way to start the day? Why, of course, in bed. Each morning at sea, you wake refreshed and breakfast at leisure. Enjoying the luxury and service traditional with Cunard liners for more than a hundred years. As you get acquainted with this big floating resort, you'll find elevators serving every deck. And you'll discover all the facilities services and conveniences of any city anywhere in the world. Those who prefer games for exercise may have their choice. Of course, afternoon tea is an old British tradition. You enjoy it at your chair anywhere on deck, in your stateroom or in public rooms, including the big main lounge with the pleasant music of an orchestra to entertain you. As we cross the equator, King Neptune rises from the sea to welcome us into the ancient order of the deep. Now, occasionally, you like to get off the ship. What were excursions like back in the day? It's an easy drive to Kruger Park, world's largest game preserve, where we live in comfortable rest camps. A skyscraper giraffe may casually look us over, or a dangerous black rhino charge across our path. The tribesmen of Africa make exciting pictures, too. They love to dress up and go into a dance. It's easy to see where rhythm was born. Before dinner, we may find our way to the veranda cafe, the Raleigh room, the smoking room, or this intimate forward cocktail bar. Cocktail hour is a traditional interlude of genial companionship before dinner. The distinguished twin restaurants, the Sandringham and the Balmoral, feature international cuisine in a leisure and festive mood. There's fresh fish from every sea we sail, game birds and fowl, and the world's finest roasts of beef from the best herds of Scotland and America. Dessert may be crepe Suzette, or Cherry's Jubilee, or whatever your imagination may suggest. For the pastry chefs are busy with their magic until the last dessert is served. Yes, this is pleasant living in a happy ship. Big, bustling Bombay will be the Coronia's home for an entire week, giving us time to travel in India, Pakistan, or Nepal. Wherever you go in India, you find the color and hubbub of crowded bazaars. Here, sacred cattle roam unmolested among the throngs. Your Hong Kong sightseeing will take you to the fishing village of Aberdeen. Our sampan water taxi is rowed by a Chinese mother and her daughter, each with a tiny baby on her back. This is the surging life of the Orient. Do we say goodbye to the Orient? and Aloha Hawaii.
may be a fancy costume parade with all kinds of prizes, or a headdress parade where everyone makes his own chapeau. There's never an end to the fun. There never is an end to the fun, is there? Now, do you remember a little earlier in the video, we were looking at Dad on the Cunard ship having a drink in the bar? Let's get back to him. Fortunately, there's a quiet retiring place in the smoking room for Dad, where he and his companions can relax and enjoy their favorite refreshments, liquid or otherwise. Here in the smoking room, there is a unique mural map. Tiny electrically driven models move across the map to show the positions of the two queens at every hour, day and night. And look, at this moment, they're almost together. Hang on a minute. How clever is that? Little boats going backwards and forwards on the wall. I think we should reintroduce that immediately to cruise ships now. Perhaps on deck, we might be lucky enough to witness the rare event of the two great ships passing within sight of each other in open sea. Yes, there she is. A few moments ago, a mere speck on the horizon. The Queen Mary speeds toward us, white foam curving from her prow. With all the miraculous instruments of modern navigation, it still takes men, men raised in the finest tradition of the sea, to guide the Queen Elizabeth. Sorry about that, ladies. Apparently in those days, it took men to guide the ships. Which is a little bit ironic, because the new Cunard Queen Anne, which is imminently coming out, is being captained by a... lady. And her name is Inga Klein Thorhog. Okay, back to our time machine. It still takes men always alert for the safety of her passengers, to guide the Queen Elizabeth, largest moving structure in the world, passengers stroll the decks, secure in the knowledge that this gigantic ship is in good hands. There's so much to see and do aboard a Queen, that one trip just isn't time enough. Before you know it, it's time for lunch. Perhaps you'll choose the lovely Veranda Grill, not only a favorite place for lunch, but later in the day, a gay spot for dinner, supper, and dancing. Okay, not sure you could call somewhere a gay spot these days? Well, not in that connotation anyway. Put you right in the mood for another age-old tradition of the sea. Afternoon tea, served on the broad enclosed promenade deck with a bountiful assortment of the pastry chef's famous confections to tempt your appetite. Most passengers, especially the ladies, Look forward to a change of dress for dinner. If perfect dining is one of your special joys, dining aboard a queen will be a happy memory indeed. Few restaurants in the whole world, at sea or ashore, can surpass the Queen Elizabeth's main dining salon, either in size or elegance. As you enter the main restaurant, the buffet will give you an inkling of what awaits you. A taste-tingling sight when the appetite is sharpened by a day at sea. Here you'll find delectable foods. 780 passengers may be served at the same time. A moment of pleasant indecision awaits you as the hors d'oeuvre table is brought. For here must be every tantalizing titbit that ever tempted a traveler's taste. Your selection is almost endless. Perhaps a tender sirloin or a filet mignon or perhaps for your meat course tonight, you'll choose game, grouse or pheasant, birds prepared as only master chefs can prepare them and served as only an artist can carve them, or flaming crepe Suzette prepared at your table. Okay, so once you're full of guinea fowl and flaming peacock, you'd like to be entertained. Perhaps we should imagine we're at a casino in Monte Carlo. After dinner, the varied program of evening fun gets underway. If you feel lucky, maybe you'd like to play the horses. One, two, five, and the double. Each time a horse's number comes up, he two. moves ahead. But Three. it takes a double or better to jump a hurdle. And the double. Six. Number three is the winner. And there goes a happy young lady to cash in her tickets. And now, let's strike up the band. Evenings filled with gaiety and good companionship. Everybody likes to dance. In this sparkling atmosphere, no one can be a wallflower. 
Yes, no wallflowers allowed. Incidentally, while doing research for this video, I came across some fascinating material about flying during the Golden Age. If you'd like me to make a video about the heyday of luxury passenger planes, do let me know by dropping a comment in the box below. Control at London Airport. So, would you like one more glimpse at the lower end of cruising so we can have a little chuckle to ourselves? So let's go back to the 50s again and take a look at the P&O Arcadia, which used to take long-haul trips to South Africa and Australia. It was definitely what you might call no-frills or low-frills version of sea travel. There's nothing pokey or claustrophobic about this cabin. Plenty of room to move around and a comfortable bed. Ample cupboard space. Every cabin has hot and cold water, and if the weather gets too hot, the air conditioning or mechanical ventilation system makes sure that all the passengers can enjoy a cool and refreshing night's rest. And if a life on the ocean wave doesn't tempt you to grow a beard or let your hair grow too long, you can still pay that regular visit to the barber shop next door. Every good hotel has its bar, but this inviting looking bar on the promenade deck has one great advantage that won't be found in the finest five-star hotel back home. Drinks and cigarettes are duty free. Hurrah! Duty-free drinks! Now, whilst you were on board, Pino thought you might also like to know a little bit about behind the scenes. Let's introduce the purchasing manager. Ah, Craig. Good morning. Are you ready? 151,000 eggs, 8,500 pounds of butter, 48,000 bottles of beer, and as the Arcadia heads east towards Italy, we settle down to a couple of days of blue seas and sunshine. It's the lucky holiday maker who can manage to relax under such perfect conditions. Even sack racing reveals its experts. And if you've never tried your hand at rolling the bottle, it's never too late to begin. Good grief, rolling the bottle. Have you heard of that one before? I'm not sure it would gain much traction if Carnival Cruise Lines was to introduce it to today's crowds. Okay, so let's now take a look at the 1930s and the 1940s, where there was a battle royal taking place between the various cruise lines to lure the ultra-rich passenger. And the pinnacle of this was the Atlantic crossing route, which pitted Cunard and their ships against the Normandy. Let's listen in to some of the newsreels. Approaching her berth at Southampton, close to that of her big sister, the QE, the Queen Mary recently arrived after setting an unofficial record for the Atlantic crossing. Also on board the QM were half a dozen glamorous American mannequins over here to show fashion. And very smart they looked. The Queen Mary sailed to Southampton to enter dry dock, but it is hoped she will show a speed of 35 knots, three knots faster than the Normandy, and other testimony accumulates of the rivalry, which is imminent between the two mammoth vessels for the premier reputation of the shipping world. Doesn't that newsreel jingle make you feel all nostalgic? So as you heard on that video, Cunard, and particularly the Normandy, were battling it out to get the Whale Hill passengers. During the 1930s, it lured people in with its French way of doing things, starting from the train service in Paris, right through to the experience and the look and feel aboard. In fact, some passengers at the time said the interiors were more lavish than any other ship afloat. And looking at these images, you can understand why. It's unashamedly Art Deco. Normandy's first-class dining hall was the largest room afloat. At almost 300 foot, it was longer than the hall were mirrors at the Palace of Versailles. Passengers would enter through huge 20-foot doors adorned with bronze medallions. There were vast interior spaces, much bigger than other ships at sea. Most of the public space was devoted to first-class passengers. What's more, she was also incredibly fast, crossing the Atlantic in little over four days. An amazing feat for the 1930s. The decks were equally glorious, and together the swimming pools and leisure facilities gave Cunard a real run for their money. And here we can see the Normandy in 1939, just before the outbreak of World War II, arriving in New York. Grand ocean liners were often a spectator sport, with the public lining the quays to get a glimpse of the glitterati aboard. As was popular in the day, rich passengers not only came with their family and their staff, but also their cars. 
Before the age of air transport, coming by ship was the way for European tourists to get to the States and see the sights. However, the Normandy was never a great commercial success and was eventually financially doomed. America did have a cruising fleet of their own in the 1950s, and one of the most famous ships was the SS United States. We'll be looking at that ship in a future episode, so remember to subscribe to our channel to know when that comes out. The lookout cries, Land Ho! Even before the passengers themselves are disembarked, their cars are swiftly brought up deep down in the hole and swung ashore to be ready for the road to Paris or Italy or the Riviera as our sparkling holiday at sea comes to an end. It's hard to have to say goodbye to friends who have shared our shipboard pleasures and we disembark with a last look at the magnificent liner which has given us so much pleasure. But whether our own destination is London itself with its bustling thoroughfares, our memories will carry us back again and again, back to those glorious carefree days we spent at sea. Blissful moments, the zestful enjoyment of superb food, charming company and smiling service, gay and sparkling as champagne. Indeed, how can I say it any better than that? Gay and sparkling as champagne. Glory days, indeed. Okay, now even though it's the end of this video, I'd like to give you a heads up of what's coming in the pipeline. I do intend to put together a video on how the royal families of the world travel on cruise ships. Well, spoiler alert, not exactly on cruise ships that you and I go on, but their own ship. So remember to be subscribed and hit the notification bell so you know when that video comes out. I'm also going to be putting together a video on some of the more lavish private yachts at sea. Starting off with the super yacht Coru, costing billions and belonging to that zillionaire, Jeff Bezos. So watch out for that one. Now, we'll also be back in the real world on real cruise ships, not in the 1950s, but in 2024, starting off with our new series aboard the Celebrity Ascent. It's the latest billion dollar ship by Celebrity, and it's going to be fascinating to be aboard. So watch out for that one, our new series on Celebrity. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us on the Ritzy Travel Guide. We hope you enjoyed this video. Whilst waiting for those new videos, you might want to watch this one now. And we'll see you in the next video.